Hi, I'm Claudia, and I recently did a research project that looks at the environmental racism that's going on right now in Indigenous communities across Canada. More specifically, I will be looking into Nova Scotia and how we can use and apply mass spectrometry techniques to identify major contaminants in the water supplies surrounding marginalized communities and in what quantities this pollution is occurring. I chose this topic to raise awareness of what's going on in the world around us and to shed light onto a big issue that we're facing today. Over quarantine, I came across a documentary on Netflix called There's Something in the Water. I'd highly suggest it, and for me, this is what kind of sparked the idea of how easily mass spec can be incorporated and used to help solve this problem. Environmental racism is a structural and systemic issue where Indigenous communities are subject to air, water, and soil pollution by strategically placed factories, sanitation plants, landfills, and other corporations that create toxic waste that will then eliminate their products into the water supplies of these racially targeted sites. Blatantly put, this is racial capitalism. So here's a map of Nova Scotia, showing in yellow all the Black and Indigenous communities across the province. At the same time, we can see marked in red the toxic industries that are placed eerily close to these communities. Just take a second really look at this map. This is not a coincidence by any means. Corporate interests seem more important than anything else in our expanding world, and it seems that marginalized people that have nothing to do with these big corporations are the ones suffering the worst. And in Canada, your postal code determines your health. Currently, the Government of Canada has the majority of Indigenous communities under a long-term drinking water advisory, in some communities spanning for over 20 years, advising residents to boil their water before consuming. Each year, there are an estimated 90 deaths and approximately 90,000 illnesses caused by contaminated drinking water, and this number's on the lower end because a lot of these cases aren't even really reported. This obliterates the basic human right of having access to clean drinking water, because in a non-Indigenous community, a boil water advisory would be an accident, and it only really lasts a couple of days. You don't see that here. The failure to provide drinking water also violates treaties signed by many First Nations and is rooted in the Indian Act. As First Nations, we recognize the sacredness of our water, the interconnectedness of all life, and the importance of protecting this water from pollution. This water can't be protected if we have no say in what goes on in terms of intentional waste disposal. So where does mass spec fit into all this? Because mass spec can determine a wide range of chemical information from very small samples, it makes it the perfect technique to tackle a problem like this. As we know, different compounds with different properties can't all be analyzed using the same technique. Sometimes you need a hard ionization, like EI. Sometimes you need soft. Maybe you only need one mass spec to analyze a specific compound, but others might require two or three, getting to that tandem bit. So my idea is to introduce you to a few of the most harmful toxic chemicals that we find in water supplies across Canada and are almost guaranteed to show up in these indigenous communities. We can look at how each of these different chemicals will need to be analyzed by mass spec because each is different. And once familiar with what we're looking for, we can quantify the amount of pollution going on, learning exactly what is causing these cancers and sicknesses and raise awareness that we need to do better. One of the biggest concerns right now in terms of water pollution are polyaromatic hydrocarbons, or PAH for short. These are molecules known for their toxicity and environmental persistence due to the combustion of fossil fuels and the release of petroleum products, such as gasoline and oil waste from corporate factories. This type of pollution is found in the water near reserves around Nova Scotia and all across Canada, as big corporations strategically place their factories so their oil will flow into discriminated against areas across the province. There have been cases of accidental pipe breakage and other white collar ways of covering up how oil ends up in water supplies, but it's there nonetheless. There are 16 main hydrocarbons that we should be looking for in the environment and are all shown on this slide. These compounds were selected by the American Environmental Protection Agency as priority pollutants to look for in water samples. Using mass spec, we should analyze these 16 compounds as well as look at their isotopes, as they're also persistent in environmental water samples. Because polyaromatic hydrocarbons are all large aromatic compounds, they're also very volatile, meaning GC is a good mode of separation. Along with their volatility, hydrocarbons have a poor ionization efficiency, so they'll be difficult to protonate and will have a hard time being ionized with electrospray. Therefore, we'll use EI. 
which we all know couples well with GC. GC paired with a quadrupole analyzer is the most common way these pollutants are monitored using mass spec. Generally, this is done by running a total ion chromatogram, scanning the entirety of the sample, followed by a SIM scan to zone in on the specific molecules we pick up on and boost the sensitivity of these signals. There are many other ways you could analyze these compounds with mass spec. You could couple GC to an ion trap, but you wouldn't see much of an increase in sensitivity. Quadrupole ion traps are generally less sensitive given the complexity of the analyzer and the capacity of the trap, so we need to be careful to account for space charge effects. Time of flight, however, would prove advantageous in this case, giving a better signal to noise ratio than quadrupole analyzers, especially with complex samples. Time of flight mass spec can provide information for the entire mass range without losing sensitivity, as there's no upper mass limit and the detector will not limit you. Spectra of this pollutant show one large molecular ion peak with a little bit of fragmentation, and often you'll see the doubly charged ion appear in the spectrums. Here's shown biphenyl, one of the common hydrocarbons found in coal tar, crude oil, and natural gas. This is the stuff that's used to seal driveways and is a majority, major source of pollution in streams and rivers. It runs off into waterways through wastewater or by industrial discharges, like those gigantic pipes that pump this black sludge from factories all across the country. When ingested, biphenyl, along with other hydrocarbons, are found to lead to cancer, specifically lung cancer, along with bladder, laryngeal, and prostate cancers. Polychlorinated biphenyls, or PCBs, are an extension, similar to hydrocarbons in their chemical makeup, just with some hydrogens replaced by chlorines. PCBs are found in electrical equipment, such as capacitors and transformers. They're also contained in wastewater from manufacturing processes that are often intentionally placed in dump sites or landfills close to native communities. PCBs attach to organic matter and exist in sediment that gets transferred into water supplies, where it's slowly released from the sediment and into the water, especially at higher temperatures. Chronic exposure to PCBs would result in serious damages to the nervous system, as well as your immune systems, along with it also being a carcinogen. Because PCBs are similar in properties to hydrocarbons, they can be ionized in the same way as before. Their volatility and thermal stability allows for GCMS techniques to be used for these compounds as well. Any of the analyzers I mentioned previously would technically work for PCB compounds, but in this case, we put time of flight into action because we're working with more complex samples and we need that higher sensitivity and better signal to noise ratio here. High resolution chromatography and mass spectrometry are also required for this type of molecule where they weren't required for hydrocarbons. Why? The spectrums of PCBs are different from hydrocarbons in the way that PCBs show a significant amount of isotope peaks due to the chlorines present in the molecule. We can see on this slide the max mass spectrum of just biphenyl one of the 16 hydrocarbons on the left, and on the right, we see the chlorinated version, making it a polychlorinated biphenyl. As we know by the binomial rule, the natural abundance of chlorine isotopes becomes more complex as the number of chlorines increases, and so these spectrums will only get more crowded the bigger the PCB compounds get. I just put these compounds into ChemCal to give me back the spectrum. One's chlorinated, one's not, both toxic, but you can see why we might need a higher resolution than for a normal hydrocarbon. We need high-res mass spec for PCBs because low-res can sometimes fail to separate the analyte interfaces and peaks will become harder to resolve. In order to analyze these complex spectra, we need a higher resolution to help us correctly identify these PCBs that are contained in the sample. The other most prominent source of pollution in lakes and rivers are personal care products and common household chemicals that were disposed of improperly. The concentration of these products is very low and toxic effects are mainly chronic rather than acute. So when Trump says we should inject Lysol, there's proof it does cause toxic effects. We've been seeing increased cases of breast cancer, asthma, autism, and reproductive problems linked back to the ingestion of personal care products present in water pollution. Personal care products are found to be highly polar and non-volatile compounds. And for this reason, liquid chromatography with mass spec Using electrospray ionization is the technique of choice. HPLC is often used, putting the sample under high pressure to reduce the time of separation, increasing the overall efficiency of the experiment. This time, we want to apply chromatography to the other technique observed in this class, tandem mass spec. 
Quadruple time of flight and quadruple linear ion traps can provide high specificity and sensitivity, but the overall instrument of choice would be the triple quad. However, a problem does arise with these compounds, as they are polar, and so the matrix of what already exists in these lakes and rivers is very difficult to separate from the analyte, and coelution often occurs. This decreases the sensitivity and makes it difficult to accurately quantify the levels of personal care products on their own. To get around this, pre-concentration procedures, such as solid phase extraction techniques, have been enacted before running the analyte through the HPLC column. As well, isotopically labeled pharmaceuticals have become commercially available in recent years, allowing us to use the deuterated version of our intended analyte as internal standards to help us compensate for these matrix effects. These deuterated compounds are spiked into the analyte in a known quantity, allowing us to accurately quantify the amount of contamination in water samples in a way that's really not unfamiliar to us. We can see the amount of these products we are dealing with in a way we've seen and done a thousand times before in lab, so why not put it into action here? It's really that simple. These compounds, among many others, have plagued the waters surrounding Indigenous communities for years, and ever since I chose this topic back in September, so much more has surfaced surrounding this issue. In Indigenous communities, the poverty and lack of education that the majority of its residents suffer from undermines the ability to politically and legally oppose these large corporations and their pollutants, making the communities more vulnerable to these environmental harms as they don't have the resources to defend themselves. Trudeau, back in 2015, had pledged almost $2 billion to lift all drinking water advisories on reserves by March 2021, but as science suggests, it would arguably cost $3.2 billion to bring water systems on reserves up to the standards of non-Indigenous communities. As the March 2021 deadline slowly approaches, though we have lifted some of the boil water advisories, a great deal still remain. Granted, COVID did steer the government's priorities to other subjects, but there are still First Nations reserves in dire need of water treatment, and those projects have been pushed back a couple more years to allow for a COVID-19 window. Trudeau has since promised that given our transition to an online environment, he guarantees that every Canadian should have access to high-speed internet by 2023, while he's still leaving thousands of Canadian citizens without potable water. Indigenous communities are almost invisible, in a sense that even today, their basic human needs are not being addressed, they're being looked at as invaluable and having no humanity, which results in their voices and cries for help being silenced. As much as we don't want to believe it, no matter how much we turn our heads away, racism is still embedded in our social structures. So where do we go from here? Well, that depends on you. So the problem is not that the government individuals are racist, it's that the system as a whole has stopped caring. That Nescantaga community I showed earlier on my slides is also featured here. They had to evacuate their homes just a couple weeks ago because oil was discovered in the reservoir that supplied the entire community. As I was going through doing research for this project, news stories from just a week before were popping up. I'd find an article and I'd be like, oh my gosh, that was published yesterday and you don't hear about it. Chemical contaminants are now becoming more and more recognized to have a negative impact on environment and humans even when released at low levels. People have been sick and dying for generations, and just now are we linking it back to the fact that it's because they've been consuming these hydrocarbons, these PCBs, pharmaceuticals, and so many other sources of contamination that we probably don't even know about. But we can find out. Using mass spec, we can figure out what exactly is in these waters, enacting techniques we've very well learned in this class. So we can figure out what it is, where it comes from, how much is present, so what comes next is, how do we get rid of it? And that in itself is a problem that requires a lot more than just science to fix. Water treatment plants need to be installed in order to filter the incoming water of its harmful contaminants and make it safe for human consumption. Different membrane filters are used for different contaminants, mainly using low pressure reverse osmosis to treat the various water supplies across the country. But there's a reason it's taken the government 25 plus years to take action. And it's because to get those water treatment facilities installed in the first place, people need to care. If no one cares, it gets swept under the rug and Indigenous people yet again are being stripped of their basic human rights. We need to speak up for those that can't speak for themselves or that have been silenced by corporate and government interests. Until those cries for help are really heard and considered, nothing will be done. 
I chose this topic because over the past summer, I did an internship where a lot of my work went towards raising awareness about Indigenous issues. I myself am Native, and so with all of the craziness going on this year, I wanted to use this platform to bring awareness to ongoing problems that really mean something to me. I wanted to show that we can apply everything we're learning in this class about mass spectrometry to real world issues. I found a way to apply my chemistry degree and all of the things that I know and understand in a way that could really make a difference. And I hope you can find it in yourself to do the same. Thank you.